Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Um, first of all, thank you, Robert and Sandra, for letting me participate in your uh, conference. Um, I will talk about uh, the Red Sea, Dead Sea a project, uh, at least on the first stage of this project, according with the agreement that was signed between Israel, Jordan, and the Palestinians uh, in uh, the, the November, I think, uh, 2013. And I will tell you why it was such, a, I, for me, for, for example, it was a very happy day because uh, it symbols some uh, uh, process that already started in the Middle East, and I hope it will go uh, f much uh, further. First of all, in order to, to talk about uh, this project, uh, I will say a few words about the background uh, to those people that uh, didn't hear me in the last, in the, uh, uh, before in these conferences, uh, I need to give you some backgrounds about uh, what is happening with water in, the, in our region. First of all, to mention the regional uh, shortage of water, I just uh, will mention, and I will do it briefly, uh, that in order to keep the same standard of living in the Middle East, in the, or the near Middle East, when I'm talking about Jordan, the Palestinian Authority in Israel, uh, we have to double our water resources uh, within 25 years. It means that uh, we have to produce at least two billion cubic meter, additional two uh, billion cubic meter um, uh, per year, 2.5, uh, within 25 years. And this is only um, to keep the same standard of living uh, that is uh, today. Actually, Israel already overcome, overcame uh, its water short, uh, shortage. Israel already uh, built desalination plants that can supply almost 80% of the wa water supply for municipal and domestic use, uses, and uh, uh, we recycle almost 86% of our uh, sewage effluents, mainly for agriculture uh, purposes. Uh, of course, it creates um, other kind of problems because all the concept of the uh, management of the water sector in Israel is based on the shortage. And today, we don't have a physical shortage of water in Israel, but sometimes we have what we call um, a financial uh, shortage of water. Uh, some sectors cannot pay, some activities cannot pay the real cost of water because um, desalination uh, and uh, sewage effluence uh, reuse is uh, a little bit expensive expensive. Uh, we have to remember also that uh, part, uh, or most of the, uh, the water uh, in Israel at least, uh, serves what we call a national interest or a national, uh, um, uh, national interest. Uh, for example, agriculture in Israel, it's not an economical issue. Uh, it is much more than economical issue. If you are looking, at, we are looking at agriculture in Israel, it's less than 2% of the economy of Israel, but it consumes more than 50% of the water that we, uh, that we uh, use. And this is uh, because of the policy of the government in, to keep agriculture in the same uh, size uh, because of many, many uh, aspects, and I will, go, uh, will not uh, mention it. Um, another issue is that water in the Middle East is still a political issue. Um, we deal with our neighbors about water uh, as one issue among a constellation of issues that uh, had to be solved, like borders, like uh, uh, security, uh, and many other issues. So it's very difficult to find solution uh, about water in the Middle East because it's still a political 
uh, issue. Uh, of course, for us, for the professional people, we know what, what we have to do. But uh, the problem is how to convince the politicians to accept such uh, solutions. Uh, th th therefore, we have what we call an unfinished solutions and some water ten uh, uh, tension about water. Um, uh, and I think that in order to deal with it, uh, until we will have, uh, I hope, as, as soon as possible, a uh, final agreement like we have, for example, between Israel and Jordan, and we will have the same final agreement between us and the Palestinians, um, so uh, the tension around water will be uh, much uh, lower. And um, um, I think that uh, for now, we have to find ways, or the professional people has to, have to find ways uh, uh, and, and how to, 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 uh, to present uh, practical solutions to our politicians uh, that will be able to solve problems. And of course, we will have also uh, uh, to convince them that they are not giving up the uh, uh, principles um, uh, by uh, the implementation of such a solution. And there are solutions, as Miriam mentioned, there are solutions. So this is more very briefly what is happening. And now about the project. First of all, uh, to talk about the project, uh, we have the, the, um, the agreement that was signed uh, last year. Uh, I didn't see the, this agreement. Uh, all the information that I have is from the newspaper and the, from the television. Uh, I don't know why it is kept a secret, but uh, anyhow, it is talking, we are, uh, the project is talking about a huge desalination plant that will be built near the Red Sea on the Jordanian side. Um, that this desalination plant will um, produce water and uh, will supply water in the near area of Aqaba. It will uh, Israel will buy water from this uh, desalination plant and will supply desalinated water for the uh, agricultural settlements along the Arava Valley uh, because there is a, 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 a very severe deterioration in the quality of the natural water resources along this uh, valley. So we need additional uh, uh, water resources in order that this settlement will keep we will be alive, and the brine of this desalination plant will go with a special, uh, with a special uh, pipeline to the Dead Sea and compensate the Dead Sea with part of the water that is, is missing in order to lower the extreme uh, descent of the level of the Dead Sea. Of course, uh, this project takes into account uh, the environmental issues, uh, what can be, uh, be happening in the, in the uh, Dead Sea. And uh, so there is a, a, a point here in the south part, in the Jordanian part, uh, south part of the Dead Sea, where we are going uh, to, uh, to uh, blend the brine with the Dead Sea uh, um, water and to, of course, to, to see if there will be any environmental uh, uh, problems uh, that will uh, prevent for, uh, from developing uh, this uh, project uh, uh, forward. Now, um, Jordan, uh, as I mentioned, Jordan will build the uh, desalination plant with the capacity that between 80 to 100 million cubic meter per year. Um, 30 to 50 million cubic meters per year will go to Israel, as I mentioned, uh, to, in order to, for the, uh, sorry, for the uh, uh, agricultural settlements. The Palestinians and uh, in, uh, the Jordanian will get 
the same amount of water from the Sea of Galilee, from the north uh, part of Israel. Uh, there is, will be a swap of uh, water, very important. Uh, the Palestinians will receive additional 20 to 30 million cubic meters from Israel. I don't know exactly from where. I didn't uh, see it. Maybe uh, uh, Tamimi, maybe you know something about it. Um, and the brine uh, that will be released to the Dead Sea will be around 100 to 120 million cubic meter uh, a year. This is uh, what the project is going um, uh, to do. Um, as I mentioned, there is a, a, a big, uh, we will do it very carefully in order not to, to harm the environment of the Dead, uh, Dead Sea. So this is, a, let's say, an, a pilot plant uh, for uh, blending seawater or brine for the desalination plant with the Dead Sea. Now, what started in May 2005 as the Red Sea Dead Sea Feasibility Study, together with, uh, with the World Bank, of course, with the help of the World Bank, uh, ended <coughs> in this agreement that was signed in December 2013, and uh, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure that uh, you will be able to find additional uh, pictures like this of uh, politicians from the three parties in the Middle East that are so satisfied uh, with themselves and they have reasons. I think that the only issue that can bring politicians together in the West Bank, in the uh, Middle East, uh, is water. And uh, I don't know uh, uh, if there are other agreements that were done. Of course, uh, I have to mention the help of the World Bank, uh, that without it, uh, the World Bank, I, I'm not sure that this, uh, this project will be uh, implemented. Anyhow, um, why it is so important? Uh, uh, I want to... Uh, um, elaborate a little bit on why I see this uh, project a very a significant project and very important project. Um, it's a very it's a important because it's a pioneer project. It's actually the first regional multilateral water agreement. Um, I, there are a small activities on research uh, issues, but this is the first, I think, the first significant project that will be implemented between all the parties in the Middle East. Uh, it is based on additional water resources and not only by the redistribution of the existing water, uh, uh, water uh, resources, not that it is not important to finalize how we, sh we, sh we will share the natural water resources between all the parties in the region, but as I mentioned before, shortage must, uh, we are obliged because of the shortage to produce new water resources and projects that uh, produce new water resources are very important. Um, it fits the regional water solution concept, the, uh, according to my idea, uh, the, co the water solution concept is additional, uh, additional water resources plus exchange of water between the parties. And uh, uh, exchange of water, I mean exchange of natural water resources according to the final agreement that we have. We will have. And of course, exchange of uh, uh, manufactured new water resources uh, between the parties. And this is why I think uh, it's, um, it's according to the uh, concept. Um, hopefully, stage one of, uh, uh, it will be a stage one of one of a much wider project. I think uh, that uh, at least a professional uh, consultants are talking about uh, the possibility to enlarge this uh, project, but of course, we will be able to, do, uh, to say, uh, to, uh, to see it only after 
a few years of, uh, of, dish, of working and to see what will be the results mainly on the, on the Dead Sea. Um, I must mention that the World Bank was a very uh, important, uh, um, uh, <clears throat> it was very important in order to finalize this agreement. He, the World Bank insisted on a trilateral agreement and it was a very important issue because I think it's, uh, uh, it, it is giving the, the, this agreement or this project a regional, uh, regional uh, um, uh, aspects and this is uh, uh, very important. And uh, of course it is far from being a holistic and sufficient uh, solution for the water problems that we have in the Middle East. Uh, but you know every agreement has its own momentum and I believe that this agreement will, uh, will lead the way to additional uh, projects. And uh, of course, we, I of, uh, had in, have in mind a lot of uh, additional uh, projects that, that can be implemented uh, to solve the water problem in the Middle East. Um, uh, every, uh, this momentum, for example, I have to uh, mention something that after Israel started to desalinate and to reuse its water uh, uh, sewage effluents, um, it we, it's immediately reduced the pressure on the natural water resources. And today Israel is much more, um, it can be much more, uh, uh, can, can deal with about uh, natural water resources or neighbor much, uh, in much easier way uh, because uh, <clears throat> uh, the natural water resources are less important than what it had uh, in the past when we didn't have the additional water resources. And I think that also the, this new uh, project that we were talking about, the Red Sea, Dead Sea project, uh, will also is important because it will produce new water resources and reduce the pressure from the natural water resources because, because of the shortage. Um, I think it's a practical solution that comes to solve local uh, uh, problems, but it's a very, very uh, good start uh, for such solutions in the Middle East. Thank you very much. <laughs>